Open arms. Question. Have you ever experienced depression? Have you ever felt sad? Have you ever had the blues? Was there ever a time in your life that despite so many people being around you, you felt alone, lonely, isolated? You know, we've been studying the Psalms this week. And I hope you enjoyed Mountain on Tuesday and Arise yesterday. And if you haven't, please enjoy it and share the link. Today's podcast is called Best. We're reading from Psalm 13. Only six verses, but six mighty verses from beloved David. Here we go. How long? David resonates this, this phrase, how long, four times. Let's watch very carefully here. How long? O oh, Jehovah, how long will you forget me? Forever? Sometimes we may feel like we're, we're praying and we're seeking God's face. We're seeking healing. We're seeking resolution. We're seeking just the next step. And we're just this, this desert phase, this wilderness phase, this, this blah phase. How long? How long will you forget me? Sometimes God seems so close to us and sometimes we're praying so hard. He seems distant. He seems like he's not responding. How long will you hide your face from me? How long will you hide your face from me? See, David is seeking God's face. Oftentimes we as believers, as brothers and sisters, we seek God's face. And yet our faith goes out into the dark and, and we don't feel, we don't experience that he's there. How long should I take counsel in my own soul? Oftentimes we're trying to encourage ourselves. We're talking ourselves into positivity. And he's saying, how long should I be talking to myself? I, I'm, my battery is really low. Have you ever felt that your battery is very low? Having sorrow in my heart. Ah, there's a phrase. That's poetic. Sorrow in your heart. Depression, anxiety, doubt, fear, a loss of a loved one. You know, it's been so underestimated that after this pandemic, people will tell you that there's a lot of older people who feel depressed. And an increasing amount of younger people are facing depression. And for some reason, there's a shame that's associated with it. It's like... You shouldn't be feeling this way. But it's a, we as humans, we have these emotions, and sometimes we go through these phases. And David's very honest about how he feels. And we pray that we would feel honest, and that we would talk to each other about how we feel. But most important, we should be able to feel free to talk to God about how we feel. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? You see, there's people... This problem and this places. I, you know, I always pray over my children. You know, Lord, protect them from evil people, evil places, and evil things. There's evil people, there's evil problems, and there's evil places. We need to be very careful of where our mind goes, where our body goes. Where we're surfing on the internet, most importantly. But look at the three things that David asks. Verse 3, consider me. Look at me. Consider me. We need to say that to God. We need to have faith and say to God, I want you to consider my situation. I want you to consider my circumstances. I want you to consider my feelings. I want you to consider me. And he goes, answer me. I'm calling to you. Answer me. That's a lot of faith. David is really stepping out there and how he feels. And he's saying to him, oh, Jehovah, consider me. Answer me. And look at the next couple of words here. Oh, Jehovah, my God. You see, when we can call Jehovah, when we can call Elohim, when we can call the Ancient of Days, my God, that's when everything changes. His light in my eyes. These are the three things he asks. Consider me, answer me, and light in my eyes. Why? Because when you look at me, my face, my face will become bright. We want God's face to be on us. We want our face to be brightened up by the word of God. Least I sleep the sleep of death. Many people think 
that death is the is the final hurrah. It's not. Our soul continues perpetually, perpetually throughout eternity. And many people are, are alive today, and believe it or not, they're dead. Unless you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are under wrath and under judgment of God. And look what it says here. He goes back now to where he left off about his adversaries. He, he's got people and places and problems in his life. You and I have situations in our life that only God can address. It says, least my enemy say I have prevailed against them. Least my adversaries rejoice when I am moved. But the breakthrough comes in verse 5. Now, I want to tell you, there's someone in Chicago right now, someone very special in Chicago right now, who is extremely, extremely ecstatic. And I know he's watching right now, and you're smiling in your hospital bed in, in the hospital in Chicago. You're, you're smiling because I'm about to tell this incredible story the next minute. But I have trusted in your loving kindness. This is a gentleman. This is a brilliant businessman in Chicago who we prayed over the phone, and he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and he called me and said, I'm about to go into his huge operation. It looks like open-heart surgery. We prayed together. It says, My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation, and I will sing unto Jehovah. Now, I can tell you right now that this young man, this brilliant businessman in Chicago, is singing in Chicago in his hospital bed because when they were operating on him and, and, they, and, and they were looking at his heart, he was not fully sedated, he could hear the heart surgeon say to him, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I've never seen this before. And the most important artery, the LAD, was 100% blocked. He should have, he should have, he should have, he, he, under normal circumstances, he should have died. But there was a strange, small little artery that grew and took the place of it and that was circulating around it. And that's why he could say the same last verse right here, because I will sing unto Jehovah because you have dealt with me. You have dealt with me generously. You have dealt with me bountifully. You have, de you have dealt with me in, in a way, in a fashion, I can't even express my thanks to you. You've been so kind to me. Isn't that true? God has been so good to us. You see? Circumstances may look a certain way, but then when we realize how great God's mercy and how great God's goodness toward us, then we will just sing to God our Jehovah and we'll say, my God, and we, and we, and we can rejoice in our heart. I pray that these words will encourage you. I pray that you'll share the link. I love you. He loves you the most. Peace and joy.